Hello and welcome everyone to this video tutorial on developing wireframes or UI prototypes using Microsoft Excel. This video tutorial is brought to you by Adaptive Processes Consulting, a leading requirements engineering solutions organization. Uh, and minute on Adaptive Processes. Adaptive is probably one of the world's first integrated requirements engineering solutions organization. It provides products, consulting, and competency development services in requirements engineering. Adaptive has got more than 100 plus person years of consulting experience, 200 plus clients across the globe, including 10 plus Fortune 500 clients. Adaptive has conducted more than 200 requirements engineering workshops in India, US, Thailand, Philippines, uh, to name a few. And it has got 10 plus international partners, including IIBA, International Institute of Business Analysis, Canada, IREB, International Requirements Engineering Board, uh, Germany, Scrum Study USA, My IT Study USA, Open RE Foundation. It also has been awarded many significant awards, such as Red Herring Award, uh, Red Herring Asia Top 100 Award for 2014 and 2015, Deloitte Top 10 Award. Top 50 award for 2013. Uh, it's also an ISO 9001 certified company and a member of NASCO. Now let's uh, begin with a very small intro to why we need to prototype. I think all of you know that prototypes are a fantastic way to uh, gather requirements. Uh, it uh, is a great technique for especially gathering user interface requirements because the users can feel and see what they are going to get in future. The other part is it's not very expensive. So it's a good technique to follow uh, while gathering requirements. So this video is about uh, developing UI prototypes using Excel. And let me narrate uh, why this uh, video is being created. Many often during our training workshops or consulting assignments, Many of our clients come back and participants come back and ask us, is there a very simple and easy way to develop prototypes? Obviously, there are many tools available in the market, many of them being even open source and free like Pencil and um, CACQ and many other tools are available. However, all these tools require some amount of training. Second, uh, modifying these uh, prototypes are always a little more uh, trickier to do. So we came up with this idea that uh, why can't we use Microsoft Excel uh, as the base prototyping tool because Excel is so popular. It has been there with almost everybody in the corporate world. So hence, it's a good tool to use. And let's see how we can build a nice wireframe or a throwaway prototype just by using Excel. So let me navigate to a prototype that we have built uh, using Excel. If you see here, this is a defect tracking system of our product called GRC Perfect. And this is the detailed user interface. And you can see we have our own drop downs and um, status drop down, all that we have built. Uh, we also have uh, linkages like if I close it, I go to the summary page. And if I click here, I go to the detailed page. So we have built some amount of navigation as well in the uh, prototype. And if you can see this prototype, this prototype looks very neat uh, and simple and I will show you how we all can build this kind of prototype in a very short time. So for that, what we need to do is to start Microsoft Excel. So I think uh, all of you are familiar with Microsoft Excel. So this is going to start a new Microsoft Excel uh, document. File, new, blank template. Okay. So the first thing that uh, we need to do is to actually take about 50 to 60 columns uh, and convert its size or set its size to 2. So this is the first step that you must remember. This is a very vital step uh, in preparing uh, the prototype uh, or wireframe. And then if you see now you have got a chart paper like design uh, for your uh, designing purpose or layouting purpose. So what I do, I leave something on top, I leave something in the side, typically about four, four on each side, but as you miss, just to make it kind of a 
center piece for my design purpose and I give a nice color to it. So I got some kind of a background done for myself. So I know that, okay, this is how my entire screen would look like. Then again, I leave some space on top uh, or you can actually make one of the rows a little, uh, sorry, uh, one of the rows a little bigger where you will have your branding information and all that, which we can make it a slightly different color. So maybe this one, I will give it a color like light blue or something like that, just to distinguish. <clears throat> From here on, what we need to do, leave a little bit of a space on top and then take about um, 10 or 12 uh, columns uh, and just block them, home, more than center. And then again take another same kind of a number and merge them. And maybe you can give it a different color just to kind of indicate that it's a data hold area. So if you see, most applications have a label and a data field. So the same thing I can just copy paste and place it here. Okay. Now what I need to do, typically my labels are right aligned and they should have a space in between. So I'll just insert one column here and I will also insert one column here. I could have left one uh, row and then I basically what I do is I right align this and I again right align this. So now my uh, data area and label area are created and what you do is you copy the same thing for about say four or five rows. So now if you see, suppose we want to design um, a defect management screen as we saw before. So obviously we need to have a defect ID. So I'll put it as defect ID. Uh, before we do all this, I think there are a couple of steps we should uh, have done. One, to align all the cells to top. So, and basically get your uh, font uh, correct. So if I go to alignment, I'll make it as top, wrap text. And suppose I like uh, Calibri font, I will use Calibri font because that's what is uh, application uses. So I'll make it as Calibri 11. Then I would have defect description, defect description. Here I could have a date, uh, date related because I would like to know the defect and if you see I would probably like to have a slightly bigger defect description so what I'm going to do is to merge all of these cells and make it into a single cell so that we get little more space for providing the defect description then I would like to have priority here and then I would like to have a field called status indicating whether the defect is open closed then it is assigned to and uh, fix provided okay. and i could also write origin phase phase sorry and detection okay so now if you see it's, it's pretty neat and very simple so I got my entire thing designed, uh, center aligned and I'll of course put a boundary around it so that uh, it looks nice for me. It's just a plain boundary, nothing to worry. Um, so go home and put a thick boundary around it. So it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea how the whole page looks like. I can knock off these areas, I don't use it. <coughs> so you got uh, your um, layout done and what you can do is maybe merge some of these cells like this uh, where you would like to have your branding done so I would merge and center and from here again I will merge and center and again here I will have merge and center and in this place I would like to have my company logo so I'll insert my company logo go to pictures pick up adaptive logo adaptive logo 
yes i got my logo done and here i would like to have my product name so i'll put that perfect uh, of course this is very small size so what i'm going to do is to increase the size to say 22 or whatever you like okay format save here i would like to have it in the center so i'll just make it in the center okay and then i can make this as red and this one is green because this is how our product logo looks like maybe i can increase the size a bit as well so that it looks a little bit more prominent like you saw there and here um, what i'm going to do is to again put the welcome message so I'll say welcome align and center align this So now if you see, we have almost achieved the same look and feel that we I had shown you in the other Excel. So if you see here, I had shown you this particular Excel, it almost looks similar. Only thing what I'm missing right now is the save and close button. So what I'm going to do is to go back and check few cells like this and again merge them. Uh, in fact, you can keep the merge option here because that will help you to uh, merge on merge quite uh, quickly um, okay. and I'll give a little bit uh, deep shading for it so that we know that it's a button and I write it as save so make it bold and center align as well so mostly we are playing around with the Excel uh, very simple features of Excel and same thing I can copy it here and call this as a close button Okay. Now, if you see here, so this was our uh, detailed UI and we wanted to have another UI which is the summary UI. Okay. So what I am going to do, I am just going to copy the same thing here, move on, copy and copy and I will call this as summary UI. And what I am going to do is to knock this off because this is a different uh, UI. And I'm just going to uh, create four columns maybe insert a row here so I get it uh, the row got inserted in the wrong place so I just unmerge these cells uh, so I have this unmerge cell option and what I'm going to do is to so start here merge few cells so this is where i'll be placing my um, data then the next set of data maybe up to there. So now if you see here, we got uh, a pretty neat uh, design, so if I just put a boundary, I will get to know if things are properly merged. Now here they are not merged, so let me just uh, merge these cells. Okay. And now what I just need to do is to copy this and uh, paste it down, paste space, uh, insert copied cells. So you can have like this, effect ID. State created, status, this is what we would like to see it in the uh, summary page. So I think what we can do is fill this color again, because this color is not what we wanted. I'll just fill this color so you got it nicely. This one I want to make it as a header row, so I'll, I'm going to give it a little different color. So maybe I'll use a color like this. And these rows, alternate rows, I would like to have a different color. So I'm going to put a blue color here, put a blue color here. You can actually make whatever design you would like to have. So I'm just going to put it down so that it looks nice. Okay. And this one I am going to make it bold so that it looks nice. 
So now if you see my main page is done, my summary page is also done in just about 15 minutes, including the explanation. Okay, so I'm going to delete all these unused seeds. And here I would like to show you two things. So maybe, for example, you would like to have a priority which is high, medium, low. Okay, so what we do, we go to data and we go to uh, called something called data validation and say pick up values. And if you see here, you can actually do many kinds of validations. You can do a validation for whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length, custom. There's so many kinds of validation already available in Excel. So here I want to make it a list. So I can put my list somewhere else as well. But I just say select. So I just say select. Then I make it as low. Medium. Okay. So now I can put it as low or I can put it as select depending on my business rules. Okay. Similarly, uh, we can put a filter for uh, status as well. Okay. Now, as I told you, so I'll just call it as Now I had shown you something interesting. On save we could go to the other page and on close we could come back. So what I am going to do is to put a hyperlink here. So say hyperlink and say uh, place in this document and you say I will go to the summary page. Okay. So now if I click on this you would actually go to the summary page. Now if you want to go back and say close and I would like to go to detailed UI you just say close you come here so this is how you can actually um, navigate from one ui to another ui the other few things i think uh, when we saw saw the ui it looked perfectly white background and here it doesn't look like that so for that what you need to do is to go to view and remove grid lines view remove formula bar and view remove headings now if you see the UI has come up really neat and clean and it's, it's, it's well organized and, and I believe this is a very, very um, helpful way for any business analyst or requirements engineer to gather UI related requirements. If they don't want, want the buttons to be here um, or they want a little different color or they want a different placement of the fields, all that you can figure out very easily by just using Excel. Thank you for undergoing this uh, video. Uh, we have many such videos published in our channel. So if you go to YouTube and type adaptive processes, you will find tons of videos prepared for business analysts and requirements engineers. In case you would like to give us any feedback or suggestion, please feel to write to us. Uh, our email address is info, I-N-F-O, at the rate adaptiveprocesses.com. That's adaptive a d a p t i v e processes p r o c e s s e s dot com okay so thank you for providing us an opportunity and hope to interact with you in future thank you